Good morning, Parkside. How is everyone doing this morning? It's so good to see you guys. See some smiling faces here. Beautiful fall weather. Why don't you guys stand to your feet? Let me pray for us as we get started this morning. God, we are so thankful just to be in your presence, just to be here in your house together as one, as a family, as a unit to be with you. And God, I pray that you go before us this morning. Let your presence just fill this place. Let our hearts be open to you and soften for you. You tell us in John 3, 16, that you love the world so much that you're going to send your only son to die for us. And we can rejoice this morning because as believers in you, we have life beyond this. We have a hope beyond this, and we are just going to worship you this morning. Forever defeated, now it is 
nations come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting god so loved the Silence is the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise we see you break down every the giants fall who fear cannot survive when we praise you the god of breakthroughs on our side forever lives in mind with all creation cry god we praise you That song says, we praise you. And we're going to keep our praises going right now. With all creation, creation will shout your praises. And this morning, just to remind you about the mercies that you have each and every day that is new for you. Every single day, his mercy is new. And we can sing about that this morning. Praise the Remember no wrongs we have done. I'm near. 
omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their sum, thrown into a sea without but a Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the would wait as we constantly roam what father so tender is calling us home he welcomes the weakest the vilest the our sins they are many his mercy is more praise the of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost we stood neath a debt we could never afford our sins they are many his mercy is more we come to you right now in prayer and we just come to you with a reverence that we are so thankful that we have been given new mercy every single day every single morning our mercies with you start fresh and God I'm thankful for that and I just pray right now that we are able to keep our focus on you this morning there's a lot of distractions that are in our lives and God I just pray that as we are continuing on with a series about humility, that our hearts are just being shaped to be more like you and more like you want us to be. So God, we are asking you to go before us and walk with us this morning. It's in your name that we pray, amen. Amen, why don't you guys have a seat, check out these announcements. Hey, good morning, Parkside. We're so glad that you are here with us, whether you are joining us online or in person, we just wanted to say welcome. We are glad that you're here. Hey, we have one announcement we want to let you know about. ICOM is coming November 3rd through the 5th to Columbus, Ohio. That is the International Conference on 
missions. If you need more information, check out your bulletin or head out to the lobby where you can find out all about that. It's going to be a great year where we are celebrating missions and learning more about that as well. Hey, this morning I have someone with me right now. This is Denver Young. He is our new director of operations here at Parkside. So if you see him around or his family, make sure you give them a big welcome. Denver, tell us how did you get here to this point becoming the director of operations? That's a loaded question, Jake. We could be here a while. But uh, at Parkside, we found Parkside Church in January of 2017. My wife, Kate, and I moved to the area and we would walk to the park right next door and uh, we had been looking for a new church and so we stepped in and never left we've been here ever since we absolutely love the family here at Parkside and as far as it goes coming to this position uh, I didn't see myself here uh, this soon I would say actually uh, about three years ago when we went on our first mission trip with the church Kate said, I can see you in this position. This feels right for you, if it ever happens. And fast forward to Greg leaving and uh, me just really leaning in on faith. Uh, here we are today, and I'm, I can't be more excited to be on staff and serving not only the church, but God full time. And I hope that if you see me, you come up and talk to me, and I want to build relationships every time that uh, I can. That's awesome. If you see Denver, Kate or Chloe around, make sure you give them a big Parkside welcome. Some of you probably already know this family, but if not, give them a good Parkside welcome. Denver, one more question. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? That's easy. I would probably choose teleportation. I would want to be able to get somewhere as fast as I can and get the job done. That's pretty good for a director of operations, I'd yeah. say. All right, guys, we're so glad you're here. Have a happy Sunday. morning Parkside how's everyone doing today if you're new here or visiting or watching us online my name is Randy Adams and welcome we are glad that you're here and we just want to say thank you for coming and worshiping with us today now if you are new or visiting we're in a series called exceptionally small and this is a series about humility and week number one, a couple weeks ago, Matt Robinson, our lead minister, introduced us to this topic, this biblical topic about humility and why it is important. And then week two, Randy Shivers introduced us to what is humility, what it is, what it is not, and what our motivation for humility should be. And so this week, week three, I'm going to talk about humility but in a little bit, bit different context, a little bit different perspective. Our message title is Baby Steps, and the main passage is Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. But before we go any further, will you let me pray for you right now and just invite God's presence, His Holy Spirit, into this room and into our hearts? Let's pray together. Lord God, we come before you this morning, and we just bow in your presence, and we just ask that you would fill this place with your spirit, that you would fill our hearts and our minds, and that you would teach us from your word, and that you would help us to understand what it is you're saying to us individually, and that you would encourage us and strengthen us and show us how we can apply your lessons. So, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to worship you through your word. Thank you for this opportunity to come together as a family known as Parkside. I pray for everybody here that your spirit would fill them and touch them in a very special way. It's in Christ Jesus' name, name of power, name of authority, the name by which we are saved, that we pray. Amen. Now, let me ask you something, okay? Have you ever watched a baby learn how to walk? I've got three kids, seven grandkids, okay? And so this is a fun time, right? It's when they learn to take their first steps. And so if you can remember watching this happen, 
is the little one gets up, right? And they're a little bit wobbly, okay? They get up on their little chubby legs and they're, and they're kind of, you know, like, okay. I want to get from here to there. I see somebody or something I want, right? And so they're saying, all right, all right, okay, now, wait a minute, my feet are still attached. Okay, so now I'm going to take, take a step. It's a little bit wobbly, right? But it's like, oh, okay, I'm, I haven't fallen, I haven't gotten hurt. And they take, they take that next step, right? And it's like, oh, okay, now I got this, right? Okay, you watch them. And then they, they start to take that, that third step, and what? <laughs> Boom, what happened? Face plant, right in the ground, right? After the tears, after a little bit of crying, they get back up, okay? And they look for that loved one, and with a little bit of encouragement, they start their goal again. Now, in my case, if I'm going to get up and I'm going to wobble towards a goal, it's going to be for Panera Bread, Bear Claw, pastries. And it better be more than one, okay? I'm not taking steps and face planning just for one. I want two or three at least, okay? And so they continue on their journey, right? And there's still some times that they fall. There's still a few times that they face plant maybe, skin their knees, but they keep getting up. And they keep their eyes on the destination. They keep their eyes on their goal, on their loved one, or on that bear claw, right? And they continue to make progress. And then when they reach that goal, you hear them laugh, you hear them giggle in celebration with their loved one that they got a hold of that bear claw, that they got a hold of their loved one, that they got to the end of their journey, right? They have a goal, and they keep walking towards that goal. Little baby steps, and there's times that they fall, there's times that they skin their knees, but still, step after step after step, they reach the end of the journey. Well, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, we actually have a goal that God has given to us as well. And so if you want to turn there, it's a goal that will require baby steps, to be honest. And so Matthew chapter 5, verse 48 says this, You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Wait a minute. Did we read that correctly? Perfect? God, don't you know who I am? Isn't that why Jesus came and died for me? It's because I'm not perfect? I mean, did you not see what my thoughts were just a moment ago? Did you not just hear what I said or what I did or didn't do earlier in the day? You want me to be perfect? And what does that have to do with humility anyway, right? Humility is not even in the passage. It's not even in the verses prior to that. So what's humility got to do with this perfection? And it's not just a suggestion. It's actually a command. You must be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Well, I'm going to tie humility to this, but before we go further into that, let's take a look at the command, okay? So let's take a look at this in a different translation. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, in the message translation, all right? And the message translation says it this way. In a word, I am saying, grow up. You're kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God-created identity Live generously and graciously towards others the way God lives toward you. Right? Now, you see, the Greek word, and hopefully I pronounced this correctly, Matt, you correct me if I'm wrong, is teleos. Right? That's the Greek word that's used for perfection. And that's what we saw in that first translation. Teleos does mean complete, not lacking anything. It does mean perfect. But it also means mature, grown up. It means the consummate of human integrity and virtue. It can mean godliness and godly character. And that's what we see in the message translation. So which is it? Well, in doing the study, I came across this helpful note in the Net Bible translation that says, this term literally meant mature or fully equipped. This is a strong statement that God's ultimate character of righteousness is himself. 
Humans cannot achieve perfection except in Christ. However, believers must strive for it in their daily lives. There must be a theological balance between one, salvation being accepted as a free gift of God through Christ, which is called positional sanctification, and two, striving towards Christ-likeness, which is called progressive sanctification. Perfection here refers to uprightness and sincerity of character with the thought of maturity and godliness or attaining the goal of conformity to the character of God. While sinless perfection is impossible, godliness in its biblical concept is attainable. And that's what we see in the message translation. And as a side note, godliness has been described as this. Obedience that springs from a reverent awe of God, it is the Isaiah-like action that has a man, awestruck by God, rise from his face saying, here I am, send me. Awe, then action. The godly among us are those whose reverent worship of God flows into obedience throughout the week. Does this help? Does this help you understand what Jesus is saying there in Matthew 5:48? Jesus isn't demanding sinless perfection as we think of it when we hear the, or see the word perfect. He knows that apart from him that this is an impossible goal to reach in this life. It's about pursuing godly character. It's about intentionally working towards spiritual maturity. It's about seeking to become more and more Christ-like in our thoughts, attitudes, words, and actions. To become morally upright and to reflect the godly character traits that have now been implanted in us through our faith in Jesus Christ. Character traits like unconditional and sacrificial love. And the character traits that we read and are listed in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25, where we read, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then in verse 25 we read, Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And though not listed in Galatians, we know from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, that we are to have the same attitude of humility that Jesus Christ had. In Philippians, we read, you must have the same attitude that, Jesus, that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So I believe that the godly standard that our Lord Jesus has given us in Matthew 5 also includes the development of a heart and a life of humility, Christ-like humility. It's through our humility and our humble thoughts, attitudes, words, and actions that people see that there is a God who loves them, a God who died for them, a God who wants to have a personal, deep relationship with them. That's the goal, right? So like that baby, we have a goal. The goal is not sinless perfection. That was dealt with at the cross. No, our goal is to become Christ-like. Our goal is to have Christ-like humility, Christ-like attitudes. Our goal is to be godly in our thoughts, our words, our attitudes, our actions. And even though we're not talking about sinless perfection, the goal of spiritual maturity and Christ-likeness is still a daunting task, isn't it? Thus, the need for baby steps. Now, I wish that when I put my faith in Jesus Christ that I immediately was spiritually mature and godly. But that's not how it works. At least, that's not how it worked for me. Just as I wasn't when I was born physically, 
I wasn't born already mature. I wasn't able to walk and talk and think. And so it is spiritually. I wasn't born spiritually mature either. I had to grow up. Spiritual growth is a journey of many steps and some face plants, right? I think we all can attest to that, can't we? Spiritual growth takes, just like the baby, it takes step after step after step after step. Becoming Christ-like, becoming humble, takes choice after choice after choice, moment after moment after moment, day after day after day. Just as the baby grows to adulthood, so we grow into Christ-likeness. And so we grow into Christ-like humility and godliness. But how, okay? How are this, what are the small steps that we need to take? How do we achieve this goal, this daunting task? Well, in order to achieve the goal, we have to keep working on living a life of obedience. Again, choice after choice after choice, moment after moment after moment, day after day after day. And when we fail, when we face plant, when we make mistakes, we get back up and we say, okay, here's my goal. I'm going to continue to, with determination and perseverance, I'm going to continue to take those steps, sometimes baby steps, but I'm going to keep going forward. As, John, as Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 21, the person who knows my commandments and keeps them, that's who loves me. And the person who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and make myself plain to him. So obedience, our obedience to God's laws and to his ways are, demonstration, are a demonstration of our love for and our faith in God. Our actions demonstrate what we really believe. As James, the half-brother of Jesus, says, I will show you my faith by my works. And listen to what the Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. And again, this is in the message translation. So roll up your sleeves, get your head in the game, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then, you do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, you be holy. So now we know the goal that God is commanding us to strive for, right? We know that godliness and Christ-like humility are a part of that goal. We know that our journey towards that goal requires many small baby steps of obedience. Again, choice by choice by choice, moment by moment by moment. That it's our obedience that demonstrates our love for and faith in God. It's our love, faith, and obedience that helps us combat our pride. Pride that results in us being selfish and self-centered. Pride, which is the root of all the sin and rebelliousness in our lives. And pride, which is antithetical to godliness and Christ-likeness and humility. Obedience to God, which is based on our love for him and for others, defeats our sinful desires to do what we want, when we want, and for the selfish reasons we want. Through the repeated small steps of obedience, we learn to be God-centered and not self-centered, to focus our lives on others and less and less on ourselves. However, the key to all this has to be love unconditional, sacrificial love for God and others. In Matthew chapter 22 and in Mark chapter 12, we read Jesus stating that the greatest commandment, the one that is above all others and upon which all others stand is this, and you must love the Lord your God 
with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No commandment is greater than these. We also see in Matthew's account, Jesus saying that the whole Bible, all of our Holy Scripture, is summed up in loving God and in loving others. The Apostle Paul clearly states just how important love is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. And see, when I read this, see if you can pick out the humility in this as well. Paul says, If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but, it did, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It is always hopeful and it endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. But love lasts forever. Praise God. You see, this kind of godly, unconditional, sacrificial love and humility has to be the foundation of our obedience and of our good works. If it's not then the steps we take basically come to nothing. It is our love for God and our love for others that develop our godliness and our holiness. Do, do, you, do you understand that? It is the love which is the foundation. It's the, the basis for everything in our lives. If we don't have love, then all we have is religion. All we have is legalism. All we have is do's and don'ts. And eventually, that will come to nothing. Love has to be the foundation. That's what develops us. And love, this love and humility is to be freely given to all people. And that's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48, he says this, You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say... Love your enemies, exclamation point. Pray for those who persecute you, exclamation point. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If, I, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anybody, anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So in summary, God's command, God commands us to pursue a difficult but attainable goal. Not a goal of sinless perfection. As I said before, that was dealt with by Jesus Christ at the cross. But a goal of godliness, of Christ-likeness, which includes humility. It's a difficult goal to achieve, for sure. It is one that requires us taking one step after another, one choice after another, moment by moment, day by day, keeping our eyes on Jesus. He's the goal. He's at the end of our journey. And those steps are steps of obedience based on love for God and for others. And in loving humility, we are to do good to all people. 
even those who may not like us, those who persecute us because of our faith in Jesus Christ, even those of different races, creeds, colors, religions, political affiliations, backgrounds, and opinions. Love for God is seen through our humility towards and love for all people. To be humble is to be God-centered in every area of our lives and not self-centered. To be other and outward focused and not self and inward focused. So in closing, how will you, how will I apply God's command to become godly and humble? Here are some small steps that you might be able to take, okay? If you're not already reading the Bible daily, then please start doing so. Maybe even for 15 minutes, but you've got to start somewhere. Start reading God's Word. And don't read it so you can check off a checklist and feel good about yourself. Read it so that you can understand how much God loves you and so that you can grow in your love for Him. It's His love letter to you. This is a guide to help you to grow in that personal relationship that he longs to have with you. If you're not already praying daily, talking to God daily, talking with him daily, then please start doing so. Ask him to forgive you those prideful, selfish, self-centered thoughts, words, attitudes, actions that still have a hold on you. Asking him to help you to grow into maturity asking him to guide you and lift you up and to give you the strength to obey him daily. And when you fall, when you face plant, asking him, say, hey, Lord, I need you to help me, pick me back up. Help me to keep going forward. Talk to God. He's already here. He's already in this room. He's already in your hearts through your faith in Christ. He wants to hear from you like any parent does. So if you're not already talking to him daily, spend time with him. Make that a priority. Make your relationship with him a priority. Maybe it's joining one of Parkside's many small groups that meet throughout the week. And I can help you with that. Maybe it's joining one of our Sunday morning classes. We have them at 9.30 and at 11 during our worship time. You can come to church in the morning, go to one of those classes. You can come to the class and then come to church. Worship. It's not an either-or thing, but if you want to grow in your relationship with God, if you want to become more Christ-like, you need, to, you need to fill your life with God's teaching. You need to fill your life with people. You need to have fellowship with others who can speak into your life, who can encourage you, who can pray for you, and who you can pray for. We have plenty of opportunities here. Maybe it's asking God daily to say, Lord, how do you want to use me today? How can I be a blessing to others? How can I show your love to other people? And that might be coming and saying, God, I want to give someone a word of encouragement. Or might be doing some good deed for somebody, selflessly, not expecting anything in return. It could be using Parkside's Dollar Club or it's live generously grants. That's what those are there for. For you to go out and be God's hands and his feet, to be his voice in this world, to share his love with other people in a Christ-like and humble manner. If you're already doing these things, as I know many of you are, what are the baby steps maybe you still need to take? Maybe it's saying, Lord, help me to grow even more mature. I haven't reached the end of the goal yet. I haven't reached the end of the journey yet. There's more there for me to do. There's more for me to learn and to apply to my life. What is it? Talk to him about that. It might be coming alongside of somebody else. It might say, be God saying to you, hey, I want you to invest your life in this other person. Maybe it's someone who needs to know Jesus for the first time, and maybe God's asking you to step up and out of your comfort zone and to share why you became a Christian, how you became a Christian with that individual. It could be coming alongside of somebody else. 
a friend, a neighbor, a family member, a co-worker, someone in your school, someone in your community, someone in this church, coming alongside of them and saying, hey, let's read the Bible together. Let's pray together. Let's do life together. Baby steps. We all need to keep taking them. We haven't reached the end of the goal yet, have we? But we're not alone. God is with us. So be a doer of his word, and not just a hearer only. Demonstrate your love and your faith in God through your humble obedience. Draw close to God, knowing that he's going to draw close to you. He already is close to you. And walk hand in hand with him by the power of the Holy Spirit. So now we're going to be taking a time of communion. And as the worship team comes up, let me encourage you this way. If you haven't already gotten the uh, elements, they're at the tables at the back and to the side here. Before you take that, spend some extra time thinking and talking with God. Asking him, Lord, what do you want me to do with what I heard you say to me this morning? Lord, help me to become more humble, more Christ-like. Forgive me my sins. Forgive that pride, that selfishness, that self-centeredness that I still allow to control me. And then spend some time before you take the bread and the juice that represents the body and the blood of Christ. Take some time thanking him, thanking Jesus Christ for the fact that he died for you. He humbled himself and died for you personally so that you could be alive and free and spend eternity with him in heaven. And not only did he die, but he rose again. And you too will rise with him through your faith in him. Thank him for that.
going to stand together. We're just going to sing our praises to the Lord this morning as we close out. Just give him the praise. we just sing your praises this morning and I pray this week that as we are learning about you and walking with you God that we are having hearts like you that our hearts are seeking what you want us to seek God I pray that you do go before us let us be humble in all things it's in your name we pray amen amen you guys have a great week